Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover the difference between theoretical probability and experimental probability. Now remember, probability tells us how likely something is to happen. In other words, the chance of something happening. So what's the difference between theoretical probability and experimental probability? Well, let's use flipping a coin to find out. So we're going to figure out the theoretical probability of flipping heads and the experimental probability of flipping heads. Let's start with theoretical probability. Now, theoretical probability tells us how likely something is to happen based on the math. We use thinking and reasoning. Theoretical probability is basically what we expect to happen. So we're not actually flipping a coin here. We calculate the theoretical probability of something using this formula right here. We have P for probability, and then in parentheses we have event. And an event is whatever we are finding the probability of. This can be one or more outcomes that we are interested in. The theoretical probability of an event equals the number of favorable outcomes, so all of the ways an event can happen, over the total number of possible outcomes. That's the total number of things that can happen, the total number of possibilities. So here we have the probability of flipping heads equals, and now we need the number of favorable outcomes. So how many ways can our event of flipping heads happen? Well, one. One side of the coin has heads. So we have one over, and now we need the total number of possible outcomes. Well, that's two. We have two total possibilities, heads or tails. So two here. There are two sides of the coin, and we have an equal chance of flipping either. And that's our theoretical probability of flipping heads as a fraction. We have a one out of two chance of flipping heads. So our fraction is one half. That's the likelihood of flipping heads based on the math, based on the number of favorable outcomes and total number of possible outcomes. Now remember, we can write this probability as a fraction, decimal, and percent. We have our fraction here, so let's write this as a decimal and percent as well. To go from a fraction to a decimal, we divide the numerator by the denominator. So 1 divided by 2 here. That gives us 0.5, 5 tenths. So that's our decimal. Now we need our percent. And to go from a decimal to a percent, we multiply the decimal by 100. And a quick way to multiply by 100 is move the decimal twice to the right. So this is going to be 50%. We have a 50% chance of flipping heads. And there's our theoretical probability of flipping heads as a fraction, decimal, and percent. So that's the expected probability of flipping heads based on the math. Now let's move on to the experimental probability of flipping heads. Experimental probability tells us how likely something is to happen based on the results of an experiment. It's based on data collected from repeated trials. So the coin was actually flipped here, and the results are below. The experiment here was flipping the coin. Each time the coin was flipped, that's called a trial. We had two possible outcomes, heads or tails. Then we have a tally column right here. That's where the data was collected as the coin was flipped. So after each trial, after each flip, a tally was made. And then we have a frequency column right here where everything was counted up at the end. There were 11 heads and 14 tails. So there were a total of 25 trials, 25 total flips, 11 plus 14. Let's use this for our experimental probability. The formula for experimental probability is right here. We have P for probability, and then in parentheses we have event. 
equals the number of times the event occurred over the total number of trials. So here we have the probability of flipping heads equals, and now we need the number of times the event occurred. That's 11. Heads was flipped 11 times. So 11 over, and now we need the total number of trials. That's 25. And that's our experimental probability as a fraction, 11 over 25. Let's write this as a decimal and a percent as well. Starting with the decimal, we need to do 11 divided by 25. That gives us 0 0.44, 44 hundredths. Now going from the decimal to the percent, we can multiply by 100 here by moving the decimal twice to the right, and that gives us 44%. And that's the experimental probability of flipping heads based on this experiment and the results. So there you have it. There's the difference between theoretical probability and experimental probability. And we used flipping a coin to show that difference. Just remember, theoretical probability is what the probability is in theory. It's what we expect the probability to be. It's what we expect to happen based on reasoning and math. Experimental probability, on the other hand, is based on the results of an experiment. Now, one last thing I want to briefly mention here is that as the number of trials increases, the experimental probability tends to get closer and closer to the theoretical probability, the expected probability. Basically, the more trials, the closer we should get to what's expected. This is what we call the law of large numbers. This does not mean that there is some magic number out there where we will automatically hit the theoretical probability, but it does mean that we tend to get closer and closer to the theoretical probability with the more trials we do. So just something to keep in mind. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.